morning everyone. It's a beautiful morning today. The sun is shining. Listen, my pigeons are out pigeoning. <laughs> oh, you see it outside, it's beautiful. Look, I'll show you again, look. Lovely, lovely day. And I've got a ribbon in my hair, I feel pretty. <laughs> Because I've got, I'm coming out in spots everywhere. Please ignore them. Please pretend you don't even see them. What spots? <laughs> I'm coming out in spots everywhere. It must be the time of month or something. Although I don't know because I'm going through the change of blooming life. So I don't know what's happening to my body right now. What I do know is I shouldn't play with the spots. But I do. I do. I squeeze them. <laughs> Let me get this chat up to a C's this morning. It must have rained during the night because the path's still wet. There we are. Good morning, sweet pip and go. That's good morning, golfer girl. Good morning. <whistles> My beautiful sky. Good morning, sky. Sarah, good morning. Paprika, good morning to you. Tea, good morning, sweet tea. Jenny, there's my lovely Jenny. Isn't Je Jenny's beautiful? Jenny, good morning to you. Um, yes, Sarah, any word on the, the job? Hopefully we've got some celebrating to do this weekend. Hopefully. Um, as I say, it's a gorgeous day. I'm wanting to get my chair out, but the path's still wet. I'm about there just now. About there doing my, um, my Olympics. <laughs> Uh, I'm feeling good. Look, I think you'll always feel a bit better when the sun's shining like that. Especially in Scotland, we don't get to see blue skies that often. <laughs> it's normally grey skies we see, or sometimes we see Brigadoon when the mist rolls in. Brigadoon. I should do a Brigadoon roleplay. I don't know what I would do, mind you. I'd be prancing about my bedroom pretending Brigadoon was here and waiting for someone to come out of the mist to take me. <laughs> My son would be like, right, Mum, I knew this day was coming. I'm going to need to see somebody about you. <laughs> I've watched you do enough freaky things, but this is going too far, Mother. I would get the mother talk. <clears throat> oh, Sarah will still will have her fingers crossed and everything like that for you. Um, we'll have our fingers crossed. Thank you, J Jenny. I, I thought a ribbon makes me feel a wee bit prettier. So I thought I'm putting my makeup on and um, I'll put a bow in my hair. Make me feel pretty. I'm still waiting on that watch. Remember that watch that a company is sending me? So hopefully I'll get that today. That'd be a nice little present today. I forget what it looks like now. <laughs> I can't remember what, what, what I chose. Hmm. I don't wear watches though, so it's, oh, it's going to be good when I get it. So it's going to be nice. I'm going to look. I'm going to look um, business like. I've not worn a watch in years. I have not worn a watch. I'm trying to think. The last time I wore a watch, years. I think since mobile phones came out, people don't really wear watches that often. Or maybe it's just me. Rosalind, good morning to you, lovely Rosalind. I hope you're doing good today. I've got my iron brewer. And I'm tapping on it. As per usual. <sighs> so what's everyone been up to? I hope everyone's doing good. I hope everyone's doing good. I hope it's nice where you are. Oh, just looking out the window and seeing a wee bit of sunshine, I'll tell you. And I'm looking at my grass and I'm thinking it might be time for my son to get out and cut the grass when we've got a nice day. Although, you know, he gets he gets paid for doing it. <laughs> I pay him for doing it. He would do it for nothing, but I, I get to give him £10. Joyce, good morning. Yeah, the swatch watches for the 80s, Joyce. Do you know what I can remember? I can remember getting Christmas gifts and it was a watch with a pen set and it was just like tiny little digital watches but they came with a pen set I remember getting like three one um, Christmas and it was like the best Christmas ever because I got three watches with pens it was amazing 
Yes, go does. That would be lovely. A nice walk. Um, see if I could walk. I would love to be able to walk. See, people don't realise how wonderful that is, but I would just be ouch. Oh, uh, oh my leg. Oh my back. That's see if I do wee motorised scooter. Nee. Oh, I'd be away. Oh, like that. I'd be down the glen. <laughs> I'd be down the glen. Nee, like that. So I would be wonderful. Do you know, maybe as I get older, it'll be something that I'll probably invest in. would be a little um, mobility scooter that could fold up and I could put in my car. Because it's, you know, for people that can't walk. And I've no I've, I've, I don't have embarrassment anymore. Neither I do. So I don't care if people look at me. That's why my wheelchair is so blinged out as it is. Because if they want to stare, they can stare at some fabulous wheelchair <laughs> accessories <laughs> ah. oh it's great that when you get this the spring cleaning bug isn't it sarah i love that i know i hate it when it's drizzling you feel you feel down don't you but see when it's like this even though it's kind of wet out there looking if the sun is shining, I feel a bit happier. I do. But see, see the Scottish people, they go nuts. They do. See, as soon as we've got a, a warm day, the guys will be taps half weather. Guys will be all walking about. Not that I'm objecting to that. <laughs> It'll be taps half weather. And um, they'll all be lying out in the sunshine with no sunscreen whatsoever. And I do know some people do not do this at home. Do not. But I do know some people that just put on Johnson's baby oil and lie out in the sun. And then the next thing, they're in casualty. That's where they are. Casualty. Like that. They can't move. They're burnt to a crisp. That's what the crazy people in Scotland get up to. Casualty's mobbed. Seen a nice day? Casualty is mobbed. <laughs> Did you, did you go through all that? Yeah, El, well, it's a UK thing, isn't it? As soon as it's a nice day, we all go... We, we lose our minds. <laughs> we lose our... See, I try and stay out of the sun. Um, it's, I, I sit in my own wee bit, so I do. I sit in my own wee bit. And um, just enjoy it being nice and warm. I, I'm not really looking for a tan or anything like that. And I've got to watch... We all know that. I've got to watch what I do, so... Um, I sunblock myself. I, I get sunblock and all that on. Go to see the people. A lot of people in Scotland, they don't care that it's going to be skin cancer and stuff like that. They, they lose their minds when the sun's out. See, they, they all have a swally as well. They have a good swally. That just means a carry out, which means lots of alcohol. That's what they do. They have a swally. <laughs> They've a swally, they've got the, the, the record player, record player. They've got a Alexa blasting. <laughs> the record player. Hey, that's me showing my age. Oh, Rosalie, I hear you. I've got a fan here sitting next to me the now and I've got two in my bedroom <laughs> that I lie like that. But do you know what a great thing is, right? See how your duvet cover right don't put your duvet in it turn it up turn it the other way so that the bottom of the duvet is up next to your pillows right and you're inside the duvet cover i know it sounds weird you're inside the duvet cover and see your fan have your fan pointing in and it inflates the whole duvet cover like that and you're inside it's like a big massive tent that you're in it's wonderful and cool that's what i do i pretend i'm camping <laughs> I pretend I'm in a camping trip in my room, so I do. You should try it. It's great fun. Oh, my God, Jenny. Oh, see, that's, that's dangerous. I mean, people don't realise how dangerous that is. But I remember doing that kind of crazy thing. You know, we thought sunburn was as good as a tan back in the day. I didn't, I didn't, I don't really burn much. The only time I've really burnt was um, my bottom got burnt. Because I was out, I was in um, one of the lilo things that you go out in the ocean, one of the airbed kind of things, and I was lying on on my belly and I was using my hands like that to paddle myself about, 
and I had been splashing all the salt water up on my bottom and then when I took off my bikini bottoms there was just the, round about the, the, the knicker line was just burnt and it was, oh it was painful that's really the only sunburn I've, I've had I don't um, burn really, I, I, I tan Yes, in this day and age, we all should be putting our sunblock on. Sunblock on and hats. That's what we should be doing. Although, I've got a nice wee bit out there that's nice and um, fresh. And a nice wee breeze comes down that path when you're sitting out, so. Well, Jenny, wait I tell you this story. This is not, um, this is a, a true story. It's not about me. It was about my uh, mum and dad's next door neighbours. Years of, we're, we're going back into the eighties again, and the next door neighbours there was the two girls, and they both went to Ibiza or something like that on holiday. And everybody would go topless on the beaches, you know. They would just go topless on the beaches and stuff like that. She ended up burning her nipples so badly that she had to go about the rest of the holiday with some kind of protective vest round her. Um, because our, our nipples were almost burnt completely off. I'm telling you, uh, I don't know if she'd been rubbing on herself, but uh, she had to wear this kind of protective brace thing round her. Can you imagine your holidays having to spend that? Oh, mm, nippy, nippy is the word that comes to mind. But that's a true story. She was in a terrible state, so she was. So I'm um, always sunblock, especially sensitive parts. <laughs> especially sensitive parts. Yeah, there you go. It was a shame for everybody felt that sorry for her. And she had to spend the rest of the holiday in nightclubs and stuff like that with this thing round her like this. Well, she was dancing and stuff like that. And you know, when they're, they're young and they go abroad, they want to try and pull a fella. I don't think she'd have been able to pull MD with that one. I should be singing Mama Bear's Nipple Song. That's what I should be singing. <laughs> Mama Bear. Mama Bear's back, by the way. Mama Bear is back with her daughter, so I'm going to be enjoying watching that channel. That's going to be fun. So, moral of the story is sunblock, sunblock everywhere, guys, because skin cancer is not a joke. And, um, see, back in the day, people didn't know her. I don't know if we didn't know or we just didn't care. I don't think we knew the extent of it. I don't think we, we knew the extent of it. Whereas today we're, we're more savvy. We're, we know these things. That's why I like to just sit in my own wee bit and try and stay out of the sun. But just nice and warm, I like just to be nice and warm. And have my feet in my bucket. That's my pool. And my paddling pool. As long as no wasps attack me because that would be... A disaster again because I remember it was a couple of years ago that I tripped over the bucket and was lying on the ground and it wasn't good. Sky, see back in the day I was topless on the beach. There you go. I was looking. I was. I was all right about it. I had a nice body. You see, I had a nice body at the time, and um, I'd, I'd have them out. I'd have the girls out. <laughs> But as I say, I don't really burn, so, and I, I don't know what kind of oil I had, it was oil. I think it was only like factor three or something like that, but, um, I, oh, and I was in and out of the water, I was okay though, mines were, mines were fine. But yeah, I was, I remember topless, topless, um, sunbathing, I wouldn't be doing it now. I've, I've, there's nothing there anyway, apart from scars, so... I wouldn't be doing it now, but even if I did have the girls to this day, I don't think I would get them out. They're not they're not for show now. They wouldn't be for show. <laughs> By now they would be down to my knees because they were about my waist when they took them off. <laughs> I know. Some people go to nudist beaches. There's a man on Sky News to this day and he, do, he does Sky News and him and his whole family Right now, his whole family, they'll go, they'll go to the, the nudist camp, like the, the gran and the grandpa and the mum and dad and all the rest. Can you imagine that? All go to the same nudist camp for a holiday. I don't, you know, I'm not, 
I would be want to go to Anuda's column with my ex-husband. Just me and him, never mind with the whole family. <laughs> yeah, there's things there that you could never unsee again. And the thing is that when we went to, it was Yugoslavia when we had went the first time with me and my ex-husband. And they were playing volleyball naked and I don't know why. I don't know why, but things were flapping about the place. There was men and ladies. They were, they were, they were all doing it. <laughs> oh, my God, Pip. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, that's it. Once you, once you see some certain things, you can't unsee it. It could ruin your sex life forever. Things like that. You know, that, that could ruin your sex life forever. That kind of stuff. But to be playing volleyball, I mean, that's quite dangerous if you were to get one of the volleyball smacked in places, especially if you were a fella. That could that could ruin your holiday, that right there. <laughs> that could be a, a bad boo-boo you would get, wouldn't you, if you were smacked with a ball in places? <sighs> I've no... I've, I've, I wouldn't go to a nudist camp anyway. Even when I wasn't pretty um, back in the day, I wouldn't be going... Ah, oh, there's my open mind. Good morning, open minded. Thank you very much. I'm liking my ribbon today. <laughs> I've seen pretty. I've seen some things myself. I've seen some things myself. But me and the the ex husband, um, we had to, when we went to Yugoslavia that time, we had to buy mirrored sunglasses so that I didn't know what he was looking at and he didn't know what I was looking at because that would have been a fight brewing right there. I'd have been like, you're staring at her too much. You're staring at her, aren't you? But how could you? I would be probably staring at her as well. How could you not? Oh. Oh, my God, Jenny. Jenny, oh, my God. See, that's what I mean. Things, would, things like that would stick in your mind. There's no cleaning it out. There's no cleaning things like that out of your mind once you've seen it. Once you've seen it, it's there, swirling around. And by God, you don't want to be intimate with your partner and have an intimate moment and f something like that to flash into your brain. That'd be it. That'd be, that'd be over. Be like, don't even look at me the now. <laughs> Sky is an educational channel. That's what it was. Yes, Gino is here comes the sun. It's beautiful today. Isn't it gorgeous? It's absolutely beautiful. I'm hoping the path dries up and then I can get out and sit again. I enjoyed sitting out yesterday. I sat out a few times and then I came in when I was getting too cold and then I went back out. And the wee dogs enjoyed it. They were all about the, the garden and stuff. I've got one wee dog in its new bed there. And underneath that house coat is another wee dog. Let's see if we can see it. There it is. <laughs> She's a mummy sook, her. She's a mummy sook. She's always with me. Oh, Jenny. <laughs> Poor Jenny. Jenny, I feel for you. Oh. Yes, that's it, Pip. We want Sky to know these things before you experience them in the big bad world. So we can prepare you for some kind of events that may arise. That may arise. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't want it poking your eye out, that's for sure. That's for sure. But, do you know, I remember when we were in Yugoslavia as well, a, a few of the local men came down and was just sitting on a bench in the beach. Now, they weren't they weren't going topless or anything like that. I think they were just down admiring the view. Nobody cared, though. Like, look away. Look away, Yugoslavian fella. But it, it, there was something wonderful about swimming in the sea. We, we, your 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 boobs all free like that. It was it was a magical experience. <laughs> Poor Jenny. <laughs> Jenny, 
Jenny's won it today. I think Jenny, you've 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 won the golden ticket today. See if I had golden tickets to give out, you would have won it today, so you would have for that. Mm -mm. But that's anyway. That's what they're like in Scotland. They they, they strip down, but they they don't go fully commando. But they they strip right down in, in Scotland with their baby oil on. It's dangerous stuff. In fact, see that crazy experience I had at the hospital, um, you know, with Uncle Frankie and stuff like that. That was the hottest day of the year, actually. So no wonder it was all kicking off <laughs> in casualty that day. That was the hottest day of the year that we had had. And that's how Uncle Frankie that peed himself. And there was somebody bringing in a carry-out into the casualty. And then there was drug, a drug deal happening behind me and all that. So that's that just gives you a wee a, what Scotland's like, <laughs> the real Scotland. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh Pip. Mm -mm. See, I've never had a, a, a well, not got anything now, but I never had a, any kind of hairy nipple problem. I'm happy to say, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been looking at that as well. I'd have been thinking, is she actually plucking something from her nipple? Is that what's going on there? Is that woman over there plucking her hair from her nipple? Oh, I thought that. Hmm. See, I always remember my, my granny had like a, a beard, but it was a right jaggy, jaggy beard. And see, when she used to kiss you, oh, geez, it was sore because she used to jaggy with her chin. That was a... See, once that starts happening, I'll be getting the... the the silky mat out, remember the story about the silky mat? That was a bad gym. Yeah, I mean, some people have no shame gold dust. If they've got a hair in their nipple, they'll just pluck it out regardless. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that's a kind of personal thing that you would do behind your bathroom door. Your locked bathroom door. Yourself. But some people just don't care. They don't care. I've seen people wrist deep up their nose when they're in their car. I've seen that. <laughs> Some people just don't care. I don't know, Sky. It's like a competition to some people here in Scotland. It's let's see who can stay out the longest, basically, or let's see who can get the worst sunburn. It's all, it's all a, like, look what I can do, can you do any better kind of thing. And you see them, they all go out and they're all lying about half naked with their baby oil on and the blazing sunshine. And you're thinking to yourself, God help casualty the night because they're going to have day three idiots. I've seen it, I've seen it happen. Oh, well, I'd, Trisha Paytas, I'm sure Trisha Paytas used to be um, addicted to sunbed. See if you watch some of Trisha Paytas' early videos, you'll see that she's had a really dark tan i think she used to um have to go to the sun beds a lot i know it's a thing i, I protect myself well, i've got to protect myself now anyway after my history but um even as you get older you don't want your your skin drying out because that gives you wrinkles and stuff like that you want your skin to be hydrated so you do Oh my goodness, Pip. See, my, my Sophie, she's very, very pale. She wouldn't be able to sit out long. In fact, her father, um, my ex-husband, he's fair. And he, when we went to Santa Pons in Spain, we'd only sat outside for about 20 minutes. And it was quite chilly because there was a wind, but the sun was out. And later on that evening, I had a bit of a tan, but he was ill. He'd look almost sunstroke or something like that and he was all burnt to a crisp but we never thought that the sun was getting us because of the cold wind and stuff like that so you've got to watch I remember when you used to be able to hire I don't know if you can still do it hire a sunbed I mean I'd done that back in the day this was back in the early 90s you could 
hire a sunbed thing and it would come and you would lie on your own bed under it. <laughs> lie on your own bed like that, with, with the goggles on, like this, to get a tan. I think I used it a couple of times and then it just lay there until it was due to come. I think, I think you, you hired it for three weeks or something like that. I'd use it for a few days and then it would just lie there. It, it would be a clothes horse with jeans and things all put over the top of it. Yes, you don't want it on your, your face. You don't want to dry your skin out. Oh my goodness, open mind that sounds... See, it's painful. It sounds really, really painful. <laughs> Poor Pip. See, my Sophie's like that. She's very, very pale skinned. Oh my goodness, three or four times a week. Yes, yeah, so everybody should be aware that the sun's a, a, a dangerous thing. But in Scotland, people just they, they throw caution to the wind, so to speak. And when it's a nice day, they just don't. They, you just they don't, don't care. Ten o'clock in the morning, you see them already with their taps off, going along there with their carryouts. Or we have a garden party. <laughs> but see, when they do, usually I've got entertainment at night because usually a barney happens, like someone there's a fight breaks out, so I'm out my, my back window like that listening to it all pretending I'm watching the birds oh look at the birds I'm a nosy person, what can I see? yes, you see you've got to you've got to look after your skin, my goodness I think the now's, now's better people understand um, a bit more, but back in the 80s early 90s we were crazy people but, but that's what we used to do i mean i would never think about going out and sitting without my, my sunblock or some kind of protection on especially my face and i always used to kind of get not burnt but this bit here used to get really really tanned right here and almost like prickly heat right there so which is funny because the radiation thing that I've got is here as well. So that must be sensitive skin for me. <laughs> Mrs. Doubtwater would love that job. Here, I might like that job myself. Anybody want to rub down with some sun cream? I could be out. Next thing, I'd be getting lifted with the police. You can hear you. We've had our eye on you. Got a hair dangling somewhere that's annoying me. Is it in my glasses? No. Yeah, so the moral of the story is mind your bits and bobs, but that poor girl that had got them almost burnt off, that was bad. Um when the sun comes out, don't lose your mind like a lot of the Scottish people. But as I say, some people like to play it like a game. Let's see who can handle the most sunburn. It's terrible. I don't play that game. I play other games. Yes, Pip, that's what I'll be doing. I'll have my... I'll be sitting out in my wee chair. Um, just with the dogs, watching the world go by. Listening to the birds. I'm still waiting on my water feature. I'm starting to panic. Because I've still not got it. So I might have to chase that up because they'd said they'd dispatched it, but it's still not here. Yeah, red hair people, people with red hair do burn easy. See, my, my ex-husband, he's blonde, but see his beard, when his beard started growing, it became a ginger hair in his beard for some weird reason. He was blonde in his head, but his, his beard would kind of come in kind of gingery. So that's how he was He was ill that time in uh, Santa Ponza. And as I said, we'd only been sitting out for about 20 minutes and it didn't even feel warm because there was a breeze. And he wasn't well. Because I, I thought, oh my God, look, I've got a bit of tan. I, I, I wasn't even planning on it. In fact, see, even when I sit out in the, the shade, I, I spoke about this before, I sit out in the shade, 
and I come in and I've had the, all the stuff on and I've got a bit of tan and I'm like, oh my God, I've not even been sitting out to get a tan and I, you know, my skin draws it in. Sky, you can usually tell the Scottish people on a beach. <laughs> They're the same colour as the sand. That's the Scottish people. <laughs> I remember my ex-husband getting them um, ripped apart, actually, for one of the, the waiters in Greece. Because they were going, what is this skin? Because my ex-husband looked like milk, you know. What is this skin here? <laughs> Shame. Pardon me. Yeah, see, that's it. I've, I know that the deliveries are a bit um, later. Not that I want to put my water feature out just now. It's still a bit early. Um, I'm terrified at cracking because, see, the first two water features I bought, I left them out over the winter and then come the, the, the following summer. They were all cracked. They had all cracked with the frost. So my frog that I got last year and my new one, my fish, I'll put out mid-April, I'm thinking, mid-April by the time I put it out, because I, I wouldn't want them to smash, because they're, they're not cheap. Well, for me, it's, it's not a, a, a cheap thing, you know, so. But I'm going to take so much joy, and I'm going to set up my camera again. I know I've done a video last year for you, and it'll be the two water features that you can sit and watch, and listen to the sounds of Scotland. Now, you might hear people shouting and bawling at each other, and see if they do, I'm leaving it in. I'll leave it in for you so you can hear the the proper sounds of Scotland. Here you stay away from my door. What have I told you? Don't you come back here to this door. I told you what your ma was. Remember that? The, the, your ma drinks and drives. I'm, not, I'm still wanting to see who this person is. Your ma is a, a drunk driver. I'm, I, you know, I'm too invested in these people's stories now. I want to find out more. But you know something, see, all this goes on, there's no police because nobody, nobody phones the police. We don't do that. We just leave things, you know, it'll settle out, it'll settle out. Unless somebody was getting murdered in the street, then of course, yes, we would phone. But if it's just a domestic, then we just let it all, and anyway, but we're all hanging out our windows listening to the domestic because we're thinking, at least it's not us this time. <laughs> at least it's not our house this time. Some, I mean, some uh, over in my other house. Sometimes we had some domestic disputes, but it was nothing like like um, physical or anything. Like that. Be a lot of shouting and bawling. And um, but it's, it's, if the neighbours were doing it, you were like, at least we're normal. People do f have arguments, you know. Jenny, well, if she's in her seventies. My mum's my got a wee um, swing thing. Remember my, last year she she thought she would hate it and she loves it. It's like a, a two-seater kind of swing and it's got like a little parasol over the top of it. She she loves going in that and she's got the wee dog, wee Susie up next to her and she just sits and swings on her chair. It's so cute. Yes, see, the, you've got to hydrate your skin, and even even just now, like winter time, see when it's winter time, always use your moisturizer, ladies and gentlemen, use your moisturizer, and put moisture back in your face because, do you know how I notice it in the winter? See, I've got a bit of eczema that I get on my elbows. People with asthma, funny enough, seem to have that, but see when it's cold and it's winter time that's when I start feeling my my eczema flaring up it's just the the moisture's coming out your skin so always moisturize moisturizing is a great thing and you don't need expensive moisturizer I like that oil of ole that's wonderful stuff just plaster that on give yourself a good moisture down and gentlemen see before my dad's age they're like, men don't moisturise, you know, moisturising is not a, a man's thing. It is a man's thing, looking after your skin is a man's thing. So men, in fact, the moisturiser that I used to get my ex-husband was Nivea, I'm sure it was, and it smelled really good. 
and it was just once the, the men done all their shaving and whatever they were doing just moisturize your skin gentlemen your ladies or your other your partners i may say will love it your nice soft skin yes lots of water especially summertime lots of i always i'm i'm always sitting with water i hydrate a lot but then again, I've been having the night. I'm still having the night sweats. That's over a week now. It should be calming down now. It should be calming down soon, hopefully. Red hair is beautiful. I love red hair. There's a lot of people with red hair in Scotland. That is true. There is a lot of people with red hair in Scotland. See, Jen, I can remember, I can remember Amanda. Now, Amanda's got naturally blonde hair, right? People would go out and buy, um, dye for their hair, the colour of Amanda's hair. And I remember Amanda dyed her hair dark brown. I was devastated. I was like, why did you do that? Because I wanted that. This was when she was going th through a phase back in the day. This was when we caught her smoking and stuff like that. This was the phase that she was going through back in the day. So I was like, well, it's your hair, hen. But I was like, oh my God, I loved her blonde hair. I can't believe she dyed her hair black. It was like blacky brown colour. So here, she got fed up with it and she decided to put her hair back. Well, did it not turn orange and yellow and, oh my God, all sorts of colours. I was crying. <laughs> I was crying and I says to her, and I, I remember rushing to Asda or Tesco to buy another dye, like brown dye, to put on top of her hair because there was no way she could have left the house like that. In fact, see when I do these wee bits to put my blue in, that's the colour it turns. It turns it turns red and orange and yellow and all the rest of it. But then when you put your, your blue on top of it, it doesn't look like that. I love red. I think red hair is beautiful. I don't think we're ever, we're ever happy to. I'm happy with my wee blue streak like that now. I'm quite happy with that. But a lot of times we're like, oh, I'm fed up now. I need, I need a change. Red's lovely. And there's a purple colour I used to put in my hair. <clears throat> but it just looked brown until I was out in the sunshine and then you could see it was actually like deep purple. That was a nice colour. Oh Jenny, that's that's horrible. See that's terrible that people are like that to this Dean's school. And as I say, that, that's people that are jealousy. And see, it doesn't matter what you've got at school. People find something to pick on. I got, I, when I was at school, there was a lot of things wrong with me. So they had a, they had a field day with me. You know, they had umpteen things that they could slag me with back in the day. But people that were fat, thin, too tall, too short. If you had a funny walk, um, you know... All sorts of stuff. And there's my um, my niece that's mother passed away last year. She was getting bullied in school because her mum had passed away. It's terrible. Hold on, I'm going to get a hanky from my nose. So children are children are um, are cruel. At, I mean, children are cruel at times. But I, I taught my, my kids, saying, um, you know, not that they were always angels, but I told them not to be slagging folk because they don't know people's lives, what people are going through at the time. As I say, I wouldn't want to be the, the person that broke the camel's back in someone's life. Open-minded, you should do your hair purple. I mean, for a while I was thinking about doing my hair blue. And I'm glad I did because I'm liking my blue streak. I really am. I'm like, I'm like kicking a rock star <laughs> for my age. People be like, you're mutton, mutton dressed as lamb, this lady. Oh well. Who doesn't like a nice bit of mutton? 
Uh, yes, I know, Jenny, it's hard. And even, even as adults, but we know that we shouldn't let what people's opinions on us hurt us because that's not the opinions of the people that love you. It still does hurt you. It does. As I said, Sophie used to, she, she got a fair bit of people annoying her at school because she, she loved school. There's my M. Good morning, sweet M. Good morning. So you, in our schools, you, you got it no matter what. And see if you went to the teacher and said, so-and-so's annoying me. Do you know what they used to tell you? Sticks and stones may break our bones, but names will never hurt us. And I'm thinking to myself, but names do hurt me. That's what we used to get told to be. Go, go, go and play. Yes, open-minded. And it would be through social media that um, these people were getting her so that they could they could do it from the, the comfort of their own home without MD knowing who it was. But that's how sick some, some people can be. Imagine, imagine doing that. The, the girl's mother's passed away and um, she's got people saying nasty things to her. See, I was the same. I, my normal colour was coming through as well, but I, I get sick of the, the, the grey, so I thought, why not? And see, now with my hair, I'm not as... Before, my hair was everything to me. Before, before I had the cancer, my hair used to be almost down to my waist. And I remember when they, they told me I had to go through chemo, I was devastated because I was like, oh God, I'm going to lose my hair. I can't believe I'm going to lose my hair. And then see when you, it sinks into you that you're dealing with cancer, you think to yourself, take the hair, take the hair, give me the treatment. So now it's just like, hair's like hair. See if I had to go bald tomorrow, you know, I would do it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me. Hair's just hair. And anyway, I kind of rocked the, the, um, the bald look, but I used to wear a wee scarf on my head, but I kind of rocked it, I kind of rocked that look. Oh my goodness, Rosalind, see that's terrible. And biting, biting's had the most dirty thing ever. Biting. Um if that if I found out my child bought somebody, my child would be getting all their toys removed for the room and they would be grounded also. That's what would happen there. <clears throat> that's a shame. And it is, I mean, in this day and age, oh my God, so yeah. I remember somebody biting me though at school, but it was an accident. Um, and I know you're thinking, how could it be an accident? I was wearing a jacket one day and I remember one of my friends saying, I'm going to pretend to bite you. And when I pretend to bite, bite you, you scream as if I'm biting you. And so-and-so will think, oh, she's, she's biting her, right? That's, that was the plan. So she, she grabs a hold of my jacket, but she does bite me, and she's like, I'm screaming. And she must be thinking she's a really good actress. When I see it, it was like a circle like that. It was like teeth mark. She broke the skin. <laughs> yes, wigs were good, but I had three wigs. I had a brown wig, a blonde wig, and a red wig. But I never, I think I wore them once or something. It was only for my half hour. Because, see, when you've got a bald head, you just want comfort. And the wigs are scratchy and stuff like that in your head. And make you sweat and all this kind of stuff. So I used to wear just a wee terry towel and thing over my head. And that was, comfort was, was the most important thing to me uh, in the day. So I, I didn't really bother with the, the wigs. Didn't, and I could have went and get a proper... The wigs that I got were like just cheap wigs, but I could have went to the Macmillan name cancer people and they give you like a human hair wig and stuff like that. But I didn't, I, I, I would have just lay there. Do you know what it would be? It would be a prop for my ASMR. That's what it would be because I never ever wanted to, to wear it. Wear the wigs. Oh my God, Rosalind. That, that child's got some serious problems. I hope they sort that out. 
I hope they sort that out. And sometimes you find that children that act out like that in the playgrounds, they're going through stuff in their own house a lot of the times. So I hope that they look into that. <laughs> I think Morticia Adams was gorgeous. See if I could date Morticia Adams, I'd be I'd be Mrs. Adams right now. I think Morticia, all the roles of Morticia, I think just that looks beautiful. But I love um, I love uh, Dita Von Teese as well, and I like um, Elvira. Is it the, the kind of vampire? I like that look as well. They look pinups to me. I think they're got that's a lovely look. Yes, open minded. I've still got my hats with my the hair on the back. They're better. They're better so there because it's just like wearing a hat. You've not got the itchy, itchy hair underneath it. Oh no, I didn't see that. Um, oh my god, no. I hope everything's going to be all right. I'll definitely have um, Blue Ridge Nurse on in my prayers tonight. Um, oh, that's a shame. Yes, that's that's a shame. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look and, and see her. I've just got a video. Yeah, Morticia was beautiful. The long black hair, the red lips. Oh, what a shame. Um, so, so, I mean, it's so sad. And I, I had, like, Peter, when he was younger... Um, almost died, so he did. I, I've rushed him. I, mean, I remember running with that boy in my arms into the, the doctor's surgery. He turned grey. He couldn't breathe. And the next thing, he turned he turned grey. And he was only shallow breathing every now and again, like that. And he was completely grey and he was limp, like that, in my arms. And I ran in with him and it was straight to the kids' hospital, ambulance, blue lights, the whole thing. And um, I, I remember getting him sorted. We had him on drips, all the rest of it. We had him on drips. And then I was a smoker at the time. And I remember I went out for a cigarette. And that's when I broke down and I realised what was going on. But it wasn't just me that was out there. There was other people. And you don't want to ask them what's wrong with their child because it's so horrific. So for her to get home for the hospital where we boy... And then to get put back in, she must be heartbroken, and I'm definitely have her in my prayers. Then. <laughs> Pet aloe vera, <laughs> Elvira. <laughs> uh. Yes. Um. Is, is that, uh, uh, is it Cat, um, Dita Von Teese that, you, that you're talking about open-minded? She's got, a, a, I'll tell you, I mean, I love her, but her house, no thank you, but everybody's got their own style. But she's got a weird obsession with dead animals, right? And she's got these these dead animals, like, stuffed, like, um, what was it called, taxidermy. She's a big fan of taxidermy and she's got like um, a, a, a taxidermy ferret in the bookcase like that, you know. And then she's got a taxidermy ostrich and things like this, you know. <laughs> I'd be lying in my bed at night like that, looking at these things. They're going to come alive one of these nights. I'm going to wake up and that ferret's going to be like that on top of me. So she's got her own unique style, that's for sure. But no, I'm not, I'm not interested in that <laughs> yes oh she will have it everything will be expensive um oh um what a shame that's so sorry oh jenny as it's the most scariest scariest time in fact, Peter, when he was in hospital, he, he had been in for about 
four days or something like that and he was getting better. He was still on oxygen and stuff. So he was still kind of hooked up to oxygen tanks and what have you. But I managed to take him out his cot this day and he was sitting up playing with toys and stuff like that. And there was a wee, I told you this, but there was a wee boy across from us and Peter always called him Baby Gary. His name was Gary, but the, the child had a problem with his skin and he had to get his skin dressed like twice a day and then wrapped with bandages. Like the whole, I mean, it must have been so sore for the child. And this nurse said to me, can baby Gary come and play with you? I said, sure. I says, let him down. I says, we're playing with Lego or something. We're simply playing with Lego. So baby Gary joins me and Peter and I'm like, baby Gary, do you want to play? And we're playing away. Well, 10 minutes goes by, still no nurse. And I'm thinking, where's this nurse? An hour went by and I'm still sitting there. I'm thinking this child is starting to get hungry. <laughs> the nurse just left me, left me to look after another child in the hospital. Of course, I, I, I did look after the child, but, <laughs> you know, here, you watch that that child while I go and do something. I'm, over an hour I sat there with the baby. <laughs> I was like, for God's sake, it's a nurse coming back. Oh... Do you know what's on Sky that I'm really jealous about? Not, I don't know if jealous is the word, but I would love to have its um, Gypsy Rose Lee's dress. Gypsy Rose Lee was a, a burlesque dancer of the past and she had, a, she had beautiful dresses and she had this one dress and it's full of beads, absolutely full of beads. And Dita Von Tees owns them all, so she does. And they're absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous dresses. But her best friend is the guy that does these shoes that have got the red soles. So a shoe wardrobe, I mean, I've never been able to wear high heels, but oh my God, I would just tell love, love to be in her, her shoe wardrobe. It's all these shoes with the red soles and it, boots with the red sole, and custom made with her name and stuff like that. That's her best friend, that, that man that does all that. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the taxidermy animals. Everything else, I mean, all the feathers and all that, that's fine, but the taxidermy things hanging out for them <laughs> freak me out. Big ostrich. The ostrich isn't as bad, but see the other creepy things like that, their claws like that. Oh, oh. As I say, I'm lying in my bed at night and I'm thinking one of these nights they're going to be like, they're going to come alive. I've seen that film, what is it? Um, Pet Cemetery. Pet cemetery, that that film, that's what's going to happen in the middle of the night with that thing. <laughs> yeah, Chris Jean Louis Bouton is Dita Von Teese's best friend. Imagine having a best friend like that, eh? He does all her shoes and everything for her. But I think she's gorgeous. Um, I will have I will have him in my prayers tonight. I think we all will. And I believe in prayers. That prayers. Um, and if you if you don't believe in prayers and you're not a religious person, just good vibes. If you send good vibes, I believe in that. I believe in sending sending healing vibes and good vibes to people. That's how. See, when I'm feeling really bad, I don't like coming on because I wouldn't want it to rub off onto you. I want to give you all nice, happy healing vibes. You know, I don't want to. Give you um, I, I could never do an ASMR film uh, if I was feeling really bad. I could never do that because I'd think the camera was picking up in the, that kind of energy. So that's why I don't do that. See, the scary movies are like The Lost Boys, but the, see, I've got a hidden agenda because I, I fancy Witsy's name. <laughs> I fancy... The vampire, what's his name? Um, oh, David. Uh, oh. I forgot his blooming name. This is my, see, this is me and my mum's conversation during the day. Uh, I forget something and then she forgets something and then I forget something. Right, guys, you don't know. What's the name of the lead vampire in Lost Boys? Sutherland, Keith or Sutherland? Him. <laughs> I fancy him as the vampire. I'm like, whew. 
Yes, but always in this chill, I'll pray for that wee baby. So we will. We'll all pray for that. That baby. And the parents and everybody that knows him. Oh, Keith Sutherland is the vampire. <whistles> I loved that film. I was 15, I think, when I first when that film came out. It was wonderful. And it was the first time I ever fancied a vampire. <laughs> You know, vampires, Aquaman, you know, we could go on and on. Ain't any kind of guy or, or, or lady for that. And then um, tight, tight spandex, <laughs> latex gear, anything like that. I'm for it. I'm all for that. I'd probably have, see if I was the queen of the world, we'd probably have a latex day. We'd all have to wear that kind of stuff. It wouldn't be flatter on my physique, but I'm sure yous would all look fantastic. <laughs> yeah, the music's great in that film. And the two Corys is in it. Now, that was sad as well, wasn't it, with the two Corys? Corey Haim, wasn't it? Corey Haim, what a shame. Such a, a lovely looking guy, such a handsome young man. Another one taken too, too soon. Anyway, guys, I think I'm going to go and hopefully get my chair out. The sun is still shining, so thank you all so much for coming in today, and I'll be back again tomorrow, and I send you all my love and all my hugs. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.